So hi Julie, I understand that your program director referred you to me because you had a difficult time with step three. Can you tell me more about how that test went for you? Yes, well, it was a difficult test for me. I felt like I studied a lot and frequently I felt like I was on the right track going through the questions. But when I got to the answers, I had it narrowed down to two or three and had to guess. Maybe I just wasn't studying the right material. Okay, well let me give you this practice question and this question review form. I want you to go through this question as if you were taking an exam. The only difference being I want you to think aloud as you go through it. So I will guide you through the question review form as you go through the question. And if any interior thoughts or commentary come to your mind as you're going through it, just speak those out loud so I can hear what you're thinking. Okay? Okay, sounds good. We have a 73-year-old woman with a past medical history of diabetes mellitus type 2, hypertension, and knee osteoarthritis. Presents to the outpatient clinic for evaluation of feeling extremely cold and a cough. So an older lady with some medical issues who is cold and has a cough, well, that can be many things, including maybe a thyroid or a URI or maybe even cancer. For the previous two days, she had been feeling weak with a non-productive cough. On the morning of presentation, she awoke feeling very cold, a now productive cough with white sputum and right-sided chest pain with coughing. Okay. So with acute onset, I think it's sounding more like a URI, but maybe pneumonia. She denied fevers, rigors, limb swelling, changes in her bowel habits, or urinary symptoms. Not sure why she doesn't have fevers if this is an infection. Her medications include metformin, 1 gram BID, lisinopril, 20 milligrams daily, and acetaminophen, 1 gram TID. She does not drink alcohol or smoke. Her daughter lives with her. Physical exam reveals a woman wearing two coats, alert and oriented times three, and in no acute distress. Vital signs, heart rate is 75, blood pressure 130 over 84, respiratory rate is 14, temperature 99, O2 sets are 98% on room air. So vital signs look okay. Lung exam is significant for bronchial breast sounds in the right base, so maybe this is pneumonia. Her cardiovascular exam is unremarkable. A CBC shows a white count of 12.3. Well, that fits with infection. A chemical, uh, sorry, a chemistry panel is normal except for a glucose of 116. Chest x-ray shows right lower lobe infiltrate without effusion, definitely pneumonia. This patient has pneumonia for sure. Okay, so now you've read through the question stem. I want you to go through items one through six on this question review form. Okay. Okay, question one. What is the diagnosis the patient is most likely to have? I'll say pneumonia. Next, what is the specific clinical scenario and or severity of this disease? The specific clinical scenario, um, I'm not really sure what the question is getting at here. Pneumonia in the elder, elderly woman, I'll just put that. Okay. What factors support my diagnostic clinical scenario impression? Well, she is older, has diabetes, has a productive cough, bronchial breast sounds, and an infiltrate on chest x-ray. So I'll write those. What factors are inconsistent with your diagnostic impression? I can't really find anything. I'm just going to leave this part blank. Um, so the next question, how confident am I that the patient has the diagnosis in number one? I'd say quite confident. How confident am I in my impression of the specific clinical scenario in number two? Well, I'm still not sure what exactly that question is getting at, so I'm only going to say slightly confident. Okay, now I will show you the actual uh, question, which is, what is the best choice for management of this patient? And then you can go through items 7 through 10 on the question review form. Okay. After reading the actual question, what is the learning objection, objective being tested, that seems pretty straightforward. The learning objective is to manage pneumonia. So, How confident am I, am I in my estimation of the learning objective? I'm quite confident. That's trick, or before looking at the answers, what is my answer to the question? So this means I have to predict the answer? That's right. That's tricky. I'm going, it's, I think it's going to be an antibiotic. Maybe Levaquin, 
I am just going to write antibiotics and I'll decide which ones after I read the answers. Okay. So now I'll show you the answer choices. And you can go ahead and go through the rest of the items on the question review form. So the answer choices are A, a CT angiogram of the chest. That's not right. This doesn't sound like a PE to me. B, treatment with ceftriaxone and azithromycin. Well, this could be right. Let me look at the other answers. Inpatient treatment with enemy penem, outpatient with levo, or outpatient with amoxicillin and clavulonic acid. Hmm. I don't think you can use amoxicillin and clavulonic acid by itself for pneumonia, and enemy penem seems like a big gun. Levoquin or ceftriaxone and azithromycin could be treatments for pneumonia. I guess the question also depends on inpatient or outpatient. She seems older and has some comorbidities, so I would say inpatient. But her vital signs are stable. I'm not sure here, but I've definitely seen ceftriaxone and azithromycin given before for pneumonia. So I'm going with B, inpatient treatment with ceftriaxone and azithromycin. The next question on the form is, does your predicted answer appear? Well, yes. But there are a lot of different antibiotic options. Next question. How confident are you in your answer now? Well, I'm still confident that the answer is an antibiotic, but now I'm not sure which one. So I'm going to going back to moderately confident. And answer choice B, inpatient with ceftriaxone and azithromycin. Is that your final answer? Final answer. Okay, so that, that answer is actually incorrect. So the correct answer is D, outpatient treatment with levofloxacin, which is the only appropriate empiric treatment among those listed for mild community-acquired pneumonia, which this patient has. So the next question on the form asks you, what else do you need to learn? So anytime you answer a question, whether you get it right or wrong, you should ask yourself, what else do I need to know to get this and similar questions right in the future? So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I didn't recognize the severity. I thought she would benefit from inpatient treatment. I guess I need to read more about the treatment options for pneumonia. So that's a good start, but I would encourage you to think instead in terms of enriching your disease scripts about the different types of community-acquired pneumonia. So a disease script is a set, it's an interior knowledge structure and a set of related signs and symptoms that cue a particular diagnosis almost by memory association. I'm sure you've seen an attending physician who arrives immediately at the correct diagnosis after hearing just the bare minimum of the clinical features of a case. And you might wonder, how does she arrive at the diagnosis so quickly? And that one answer is that from years of study and patient interaction, the senior clinician has a highly refined disease script that's activated almost unconsciously from the clinical clues of the patient's presentation. So your goal, whether you're studying or seeing patients in clinic or on the wards, should be to enrich your own disease scripts so that when you hear a case presentation or you see a patient in clinic or you read a test question, that the correct diagnosis is suggested to you almost by memory association, just from the clinical features of the case. And recognizing the different clinical features of the case is important because frequently the diagnostic or therapeutic or prognostic considerations depend on which clinical subtype of disease that you're dealing with. So based on this question, I would say that you have a decent disease script for pneumonia in general, but that your script lacks specificity. That is, you don't, your mental picture of what pneumonia is doesn't allow you to readily distinguish between the different subtypes, such as community-acquired versus healthcare-associated, or the different severities that you can grade based on like a CURB 65 score. So, and I, as I mentioned before, recognizing the different subtypes or severity is going to change your diagnosis or your therapy, and that's going to be instrumental in getting the question right, is knowing which clinical subtype or severity of disease you're working with. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. The questions are always about diagnosis or management anyway. Exactly.